Good morning, everyone. Today we are dealing about history of anesthesia. I'm Dr. Lavanya, Assistant Professor in Department of Anesthesiology, Sri Lakshmi Narayana Institute of Medical Sciences, Pondicherry. So, what is history? Why we require history of anesthesia? Um, because the farther we look back, the further we can see more in future. So before surgery, before anesthesia, how it was? It was very terrible pain. It was including a lot of physical and emotional exhaustion, post-traumatic stress. It is considered as a post-traumatic stress. It cries, the patient cries and screams were distracting to the surgeon and there was an inevitable sepsis and there were very high mortality rates. So, by the middle of 19th century, there was a greater determination by some surgeons to devise ways of improving the operating conditions to decrease appalling surgical mortality figures. So, bold approaches and risks were recognized, and these factors came together in Boston, Massachusetts, on October 16, 1846, which was a very important day in the history of anesthesia. When William T. G. Morton demonstrated the use of ether inhalation for surgical anesthesia. So what was what happened after anesthesia? So obviously, it was a painless surgery. Patients were very comfortable, and uh, and uh, the, all the complications before were a little bit concise. So what kind of mental blindness could have prevented physicians from actively pursuing a remedy for horrors of surgery? Pain was then often considered to be a punishment for committed sins or a form of religious suffering. The word pain is derived from the Greek term poin, which means penalty. No scientific uh, understanding was made regarding that disease. So prehistory, before before introduction of anesthetic agents or anesthesia. The prehistory surgery has been practiced for thousands of years. Ancient Americans defined the skull, the, the skull they used to define the skull. Cocaine may be helpful as a topical anesthetic. So in Middle Ages, attempts were used, attempts were turned to use alcohol fumes as an analgesic during surgery. The sporophytic sponge is mentioned in numerous manuscripts in the Middle Ages. It contained opium, mandragora, hemlock, and hyoscyamus. So the Renaissance period was occurred when the sulfuric ether has been synthesized from the sulfuric acid and the alcohol by the chemist Valerius Codius orders in 1515 to 1544. Paracets is described the effect of either on chickens and stacks stated that it quiets all suffering without harm and relieves all pain. So alcohol, opium, hypnotism, and mesmerism were all used that, in that Middle Age period. So in the passages who described that uh, either, either effect on chickens and stated that it is it quiets, quits all suffering. So Introduction of general anesthesia was developed by the invention of an hypodermic, hypodermic medium, which did not occur later, until later. So, first uh, general anesthesia was designed to be inhalation agents. So, nitrous oxide, which was discovered by Joseph Priestley in 1772. And Humphrey Davy began experiments at the Pneumatic Institute in Bristol in 1799. Discovered that nitrous oxide could relieve headaches and toothaches. He ignited in 1812. Carbon dioxide. Henry Hill Hickman worked with carbon dioxide in 1830. Discovered that animals could be rendered insensible for an operation. He worked during 1800 to 1830. So William Edward Clark, he used either recreationally in Jan 1842 while a medical student, he, administ he administered either for dental extraction. One man who witnessed such use of either in Clark's presence was W.T.G. Morton. 
his professor believed that the patient had a hysterical attack. So Vaughn Clark warned not to continue such treatment. Then Crawford Law, Vaughn anesthetized James Venable with either in March 1842 in Jefferson, Georgia. Painless remove, remove tumors on neck. So he subsequently administered either to many of his patients. And he never used to publish his, his results until 1849. Then Horace Wells, he is a dentist in Hartford, Connecticut. By marriage and practice, was one of the leading citizens of Hartford. Needed a way to stop pain to install dentures. Then there comes the open gas. In December 1844, Gardner Quincy Colton bought his law fingers traveling show to her. Wells and his wife attended that meeting. Then there was a breakthrough. The Wells saw a gentleman cut his leg on the table painlessly. So he tried it himself for the removal of his molar teeth. Then came the painless dentistry was born. Horace Wells at Harbor. He tried to publicly demonstrate nitrous oxide anesthesia at MGH in, 18, in 1845 January. The patient was shouting, groaning, so the demonstration failed. Then the first successful public demonstration of anesthesia was occurred, occurred in uh, October 16th of 1846. It was done by WTG Morton and Anesthesia. He was acquainted with Wells as having been a former student of colleague of his and had attended the failed demonstration at NGH. So Morton had lingering thoughts about a more suitable agent. So he had invented a new method for fitting dentures, but the process was prohibitively painful and few patients would submit to the procedure. An adequate analysis could accelerate his business. Charles Jackson and Dinker. Morton enrolled briefly at Harvard Medical School. He became acquainted with Charles A. Jackson, professor of chemistry. On Morton's queries, Jackson advised a trial of sulfuric ether or an alternative for nitrous oxide. So Morton obtained the ether. He performed experiments on himself and his pet animals, administered the agent successfully on September 30, 1846, to even for extraction of upper bicuspid tooth. Prompted by this success, he promptly used the agent on his dental practice. Then in October 8, 16, 1846, Morton bought ether to the operating theater at Harvard. Gilbert Abbott had a jaw tumor. Gentlemen, this is no handbag, he shouted. Then, what was the success of either? Why either was so successful? Because it was easy to prepare, easy to store in bottles, unlike nitrous oxide. So, good physical properties, volatility, enabled inhibition, low concentration made. When patients did not become hypoxic, very little cardiopulmonary de depression. Low induction, safety margin for new learners, prolonged emergence, and easy to administer. Morton refused to tell his colleagues at uh, uh, Massachusetts General Hospital what Leotown was. For a fee, he intended to provide instruction on its safe use. After two weeks, gave English the right to use either without compensation. So by December 1846, either anesthetes were being given in London and with a money, general anesthetists were recorded in France and Germany. Dr. Peter Parker gave the first anesthetics in China eight months later. The first Australian anesthetic was given in June 1847. So then there was a death of Morton. Morton tried to patent Leotone to make money. Spent for the next 22 years seeking compensation for his discovery. To receive compensation, one must prove to be the sole discoverer. So, we have an aspect during the Civil War, and he finally he died due to a cerebral hemorrhage on July 15, 1868, in New York City. Then, other inhaled, inhaled anesthetics used effective for surgical anesthesia as profound medical and surgical implications. The surgical pain put to sleep. Birth of anesthesia only as a specialty team. 
subsequent development of better inhaled anesthetics, chloroform 1847, cyclopropane 1934, ethyl chloride divinyl ether, chlorination offered a stable, so volatile hydrocarbons. Charles Suckling in 1951 began attempting to prepare the ideal anesthetic gas, which resulted in clinical introduction of halothane in 1956. Then in 60, methoxyfluorine 66, and fluorine 71, isofluorine 92, desfluorine 95, sevofluorine, and followed. The chloroform James Simpson, an obstetrician for from Edinburgh, Scotland, used either in 1846, but was determined to find a better agent. Simpson had a group of friends learned of the surprising potency of chloroform at a dinner party hosted by Simpson on September 4, 1847. He advocated its use during labor. Chloroform was widely used in England, but converse Controversy developed about, it, about its efficacy, particularly in otherwise healthy subjects, but there was a demand of chloroform. Various commissions and committees were formed to Hyderabad commissions to investigate the safety of chloroform. Major Edward Laurie, principal of the Indian Medical School in Hyderabad, preconceived belief in the safety of chloroform. The results concluded that chloroform was entirely safe if given according to his method. In 1894, Leon G. Goodfield reports on several cases of delayed chloroform cryptotoxicity in children. Government level demonstrated that combination of light chloroform and anesthesia and adrenaline produced a fatal ventricular fibrillation, explains the sudden demise of several healthy subjects administered chloroform anesthesia. Then cyclopropane and trichloroethylene were developed. It was introduced in 1934 by Ralph Rogers, boiling, is a boiling free explosive. Cyclopropane was introduced as a non flammable alternative to ether and cyclopropane was made in 1935. Prompted by Christopher L. Promoted by Christopher L. Hewitt. Withdrawn because it decomposes to the toxic now poison dechloroacetylene in presence of soda lime and produces phosgene, which is a severe respiratory irritant when electrocautery was used. Nitrous oxide and sticks in humans. Nitrous oxide was the least popular of the early inhalation anesthetic because of low potency and tendency to cause asphyxia when used alone. 1868, interest in nitrous oxide was revived when Edmund Andrews administered 18-20% oxygen. It was, however, overshadowed by the popularity of ether and chloroform. It is ironic that nitrous oxide is the only one of these agents still commonly used today. Then the development of regional anesthesia. Carl Fuller, Vinny's ophthalmologist. Friends with Sigmund Freud experimented with cocaine and gave Fuller an example. A sample. In 1884, Fuller inadvertently licked his fingers after touching cocaine sample, tongue gets numb. So in his lab creates cocaine solution, anesthetizes cornea of animals. Fuller is too poor to attend Congress of German Ophthalmologists at Heidelberg. A friend presents his article within a year over 100 papers published the supporting use of cocaine in Europe and North America. The idea of injecting cocaine into drug drums is, to, is credited to William Halstead and Alfred Hall, the two young surgeons who, became their, who began their injection experiments as early as eight weeks after the Edinburgh announcement. Halstead even performed a breaking that was locked under the direct vision while the patient received an inhaled anesthetic. Spinal anesthesia, the term spinal anesthesia was coined by Leonard in 1885, a neurologist who observed Alfred and Hall. Wanted to assess the action of cocaine in specific therapy for neurological problems. After assessing its action in a dog producing a blockade of rapid onset that was confined to the animal's rear legs, he administered cocaine to a man addicted to masturbation. Legs became gradually sleepy, so dog Lightly had spinal and the, the patient had epidural. So, 1899, first spinal anesthetic was, was using cocaine for surgery, performed by August Mead in Kiel, Germany. 
used PNP technique obtain CSF from lower lumbar interstate before injection. We perform the six final anesthetics. Some patients cried out during surgery. We felt great study was needed. We permitted his resident doctor. Edelbert performed his final on him. Edelbert could attach the syringe to the needle and a large volume of CSF spray, ready to abandon the research on human volume. Hilbrand volunteered. We performed the spinal and 25 minutes later, Hilbert could not feel a blow with his hammer on the table or a strong pulling on the testicle. The both developed a violent postural puncture head, being headed took nine days to resolve. Smaller needles reduced cerebral spinal fluid loss, sterile gloves, refined technique, discovery of baricity, better local anesthesia, all eventually led to continued popularity of spinal anesthesia. Epidural anesthesia, gene induced cigar and Fernand Kathleen independently introduced cocaine through the sacral hiatus in 1901, first practitioner for caudal, and caudal or epidural anesthesia. In 1921, Fidel Pages devised a technique to introduce epidural protein at all levels of the neurosis. He used a blunt needle and then felt and um, heard the entry of the needle through the ligamentum flare. Achille Eki Mario Dolgetti described epidural injection for global anesthesia in, in 1931, apparently without prior knowledge of the work of Pages. So this method of identification of the epidural space, use of continuous pressure on the plumber of the saline filled syringe so as the needle is advanced through the ligament structure. Arthur Lawen, a pupil, uh, a pupil of hinge brown, successfully used a caudal anesthesia with large volumes of protein for pelvic surgery. Edward to her used the urethral catheter threaded through a large sugar input spinal needle to provide continuous spinal anesthesia. The tube needle was a simple modification of the urethral needle and was used to used by him to thread the catheter into subarachnoid space. Manuel Marcel Cubello of Havana, Cuba, used the Tohai needle and a small urethral catheter to provide continuous lumbar epidural analgesia. Philip Brobage and uh, Brobage and John Bonica performed several studies on epidural dose relation, response relationships and the hemodynamic changes that followed initiation of the drug. The use of spinal opioids spread rapidly after the initial report went. Sammy and colleagues confirmed that collective opioid spinal analgesia occurs in humans. Cousins noticed that one to two milligrams of intrathecal morphine injected into thoracic intrathecal region relieved the pain of breast for lung cancer for more than 24 hours. Behar reported epidural opioid therapy in 1979. The explosive interest in the neurological opioids that followed these reports was equal to the enthusiasm of the initial report of protein spinal anesthesia. The use of epidural catheters to provide long-lasting pain relief after surgery led to the formation of acute pain services. Mm -hmm. In 1908, we introduced IV regional block placed between two tourniquets known as the base block. In 1928, GP-15 uses hypothetic in, uh, in uh, lubricant in lumbar spinal to produce thoracic anesthesia. In 1940, William Lemon popularized continuous spinal technique using malleable silver needle that intrathecally taught throughout the procedure. In 1943, Lido team synthesized by Lord Spring and the uh, request in Sweden. 44, Edward Tuhi introduces to her needle for passing lacquer steel catheters for spontaneous spinal. 1949, Martin Kulberg performs first spontaneous epidural to her needle and fine ureteral catheter. May many infections before plastic catheters develop. Even James Leonard Corning, a neurologist from New York, observed that placing a tourniquet on the limb could prolong the analgesic effects of infiltration and analgesia. Henrich Braun achieved the same prolonged effect of cocaine by adding epinephrine, which is a chemical tourniquet. 
Braun became the pioneer of the new drug cocaine introduced by Braun in 1905 as a less toxic drug than cocaine. Braun developed several new nerve blocks following the term conduction anesthesia and is remembered by European writers as father of conduction anesthesia. The development of regional anesthesia in the United States was accelerated with the arrival of Gaston at the Mayo Clinic in 1924, founded by the American Society of Regional Anesthesia and the development of intravenous anesthetics. In 1657, Christopher Wren injects opium into a dog using a goose pill and a pink bladder. The dog becomes stupefied. 1865, development of bipolar with syringe, Alexander Wood is usually created with the discovery, but earlier syringes were described. In 1875, Pierre O'Brien published a report of 36 cases in which chloral hydrate was injected immediately preceding incision. Several post operative deaths occurred. Few people emulated this technique. This is the um, hypodermic. In 1932, exobutyl used clinically for induction of anesthesia. 34 pentacol salopentone used to test it extensively by law. John Lundy at Mayo Clinic. During World War II, Pentacol used extensively. Cardiovascular effects learned the hard way in bone and hypovolemic patients. In 1962, ketamine synthesized by Park Davis Lab. In later, the amount of the group of, uh, group of um, uh, like compounds contained clinical use. In 1964, hypnomidate synthesized by Paul Jensen, not released by, for clinical use until 1974. Great acceptance in the hemodynamic and unstable patients. Then, in 1977, topical release anaphylactic reactions and synthesized with thermophoria. So, taken off market and released the stabilizing with egg lecithin, soybean oil, and glucose. Muscle relaxants. Introduction was in 1940s. Revenues. It was a great revolution in anesthesia practice. Muscle relaxants facilitate safe tracheal intubation, which leads to profound advances of airway management. Enables skeletal muscle paralysis and relaxation important to a wide variety of surgical procedures. Decreases anesthetic requirements needed to achieve similar muscle relaxation, greater hemodynamic stability, and yet post-operative nausea, vomiting, etc. Used to prevent trauma in electroconvulsive therapy for psychiatric disorders. Used to facilitate patient ventilator symphony in the intensive care units. Explorers of South America in the 16th century returned with tales of native Indian arrow poisons that could kill enemies and animals during hunting. Poison was called curare. In By the 18th and early 19th century, explorers brought own small quantities of curare. In early experimentation, they saw that curare caused muscle paralysis, including respiratory muscles. Found that animals could be kept alive by dreadlocks and ventilating with the bellows until return. Late 19th and 20th century, sporadic but unsuccessful attempts to use curare in tetanus, therapies, epilepsy, and chloroform disorders. In pure samples, limited quantities, unsafe in significant doses without mechanical ventilation, ventilation. So like this, they used to have developed the curare. Clinical uses. In 1938, Gill learns of his multiple sclerosis. For collects 12 kgs of raw curare in cattle and delivers it to state pharmaceuticals. In 1939, the net uses curare to prevent trauma from clinical ECT. 42 holiday devices rapid head drop active for standardizing dosing 0.1 ml of excess curare solution for 15 seconds. This is the rapid experiment of the curare. In 1942, Harper, Griffith, and Edwin Johnson, Johnson report successful use of curare during a section. Later that year, published a report of 25 patients having abdominal surgery. In 1900, Paul discussed the antagonism of curare with the physiostigma. In 1906, Sachs Mill first prepared for relaxing properties on mouth with the mass. That is when your stigma is synthesized, which is 10 times more potent than physiostigma. 
Okay, means that we are successing the same way model winner Daniel Mowet. In 56, distinction is made between depolarizing and non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. 64, Pacronium, 29, Lectonium, 92, Neurotrophin, 94, Rovacum, 2004, Savarese. Okay, yes. In 1805, Mosley was isolated from opium by Sertuner and subsequently tried an uh, induction agent in combination with Stoffelman by Drenkeld in 1916. The morbidity and mortality initially associated with high dose of opioids in earlier reports caused many analysts to avoid opioids and favor pure inhalation anesthesia. Interest in opioids in anesthesia returned forward. Following the synthesis of Cepidin in 1939, the concept of balanced anesthesia introduced by Lundy also included opioids for analysis. In 1969, Lovenstein rekindled interest in opioid anesthesia by introducing the concept of high doses of opioid as complete anesthetics. Morphine was initially employed by fentanyl, sofentanyl, alfentanyl, and was subsequently used as a sole agent. As experience grew with this technique, its limitations in reliability preventing patient awareness and suppressing autonomic responses during surgery would be realized. <coughs> control of the airway. Early anesthesia, no definitive airway control was there. Mass anesthesia inhaler drop mass techniques were all equally capable of producing an unconscious patient who offered no airway protection or control against apnea or muscle. In 1877, Joseph Flower described Jodra's technique for opening airway, performs a surgical airway with metal cannula, first cricothyroidomy by anesthesia provider. So Frederick Hewitt developed a device for preventing the tongue from obstructing the airway in unconscious patients. He called this device the airway restorer device, which was a direct precursor to the modern era of rural airways. 1875, eight first tubes were devised for the use in drowning victims not used in anesthesia until 1878 by William McLean. 1885, Joseph, Joseph performed multiple blind intubations with flexible metal endotracheal tubes during a diphtheria pandemic. Later, he developed a rigid tube with a conical end piece that could be attached to a bellows that provides positive pressure ventilation. Early laryngoscopes designed by Alfred Christian, Jackson, Janway, and others, cumbersome dental trauma, food visualization, difficult conditions without muscle visualization. The development of anesthesiologists inspired laryngoscopes occurred just prior to the introduction of muscle relaxation, which dramatically improved intubating conditions. After Maggie, after World War I, even Maggie introduced the rubber endotracheal tubes. In 1926, Arthur Goodell began experimenting with animal tracheas, trying to devise a soft endotracheal tube, fluid rubber from surgical gloves, etc., to endotracheal tubes tested above and below the cow. Demonstrated success with the down the dog airway. In 1981, Dr. AIJ Archie Brain began work on the laryngeal mass airway, complete extensive study of the airway and opening cadavers and figures to create an effective airway device now used very extensively. On April 23rd in the year 1895, Alfred Christine performed the first direct vision laryngoscopy. He is the outstanding pioneer of the modern direct laryngoscopy. This is the original manual laryngoscope. After the end of first call, which occurred from 1917 to 1910. Then the laryngoscope blades. Robert Miller and Sir Robert McIntosh simultaneously developed laryngoscope blades designed to maximize visualization of the vocal cords. Anesthesia apparatus. Early device and delivery systems, more terms, either inhaler. Snow first inhaler modified in early February 1847 to include 
the way we mean that uh, permitted him to control the use of control proportion of atmosphere and either vapor administered through, through the operation. And this is the John Snow either inhaler, which is a very prototype instrument. Then comes the shimbal burst mask. These are the single mesh marks that is used for the either anesthesia. Then junkers inhaler. The inlet junker device a simple inhaler consisting of a bottle to hold liquid chloroform and inflow tube to which the anesthetist could please aid within a hand pump and an outflow tube directed into the mask. Shifter apparatus. The popular shifter model was used by Francis E. Shifter to provide anesthesia to King George of England for reception and drainage of Pembema, a feat for which Shifter was knighted. Shifter apparatus was a popular means of administering a mixture of chloroform and ether in the Albert Boris apparatus. And oxygen and nitrates. Oxide were available under compression as early as 1985. Heavy nitrous oxide and air apparatus. Heavy delivers the first anesthesia machine to deliver various proportions of nitrous oxide and oxygen. Head prince apparatus. The invention of reducing valves in the uh, is attributed to J. Albion head prince, an anesthesiologist from Minnesota. Minneapolis, who observed that the opening of high pressure cylinders open doors close to the as the gases were released. He described a valve that reduced that reduced the height and pressures for working pressures and incorporated this device into his hybrid anesthetizer. This portable device had a circle type of door with an eager vaporizer, vaporizer situated at the edge expiratory side of the patient. Boyle's apparatus. Manufactured in the period of World War I, this is designed on a wooden frame mounted on cast on casters. It has a triple size speed water bottle flow meter for delivering nitrous oxide, oxygen, carbon dioxide, or measuring the rate of flow. They are chloroform and ether bake like mounted bottle. Their outlet is supposed to be connected to a two-liter gallon rubber bag with the bar freeway of the similar soft or rubber padded bag. Breathing circuits incorporated within the respiratory valves in these machines were used much later. So many apparatus, many gas in air apparatus with demand valves developed. Flow meters, bubble flow meters, dry bobbins, or ball bearing flow meters sticking. So, in 1910, Leo uh, had developed the first to upgrade rotometers in anesthesia. Rotometers designed for use in German industry were first employed in Britain in 1937 by Richard Carl. The copper kettle was the first temperature compensated accurate. Halothane was first marketed in Britain and effective temperature compensated agents specific vaporizer had recently been placed in clinical use. Temperature compensated trichloroethylene A vaporizer has been created, featured with a biometallic strap. This maintained a constant inside concentration despite changes in temperature and vapor pressure. The technology was used to create the fluke. The first uh, of the series of agent specific tech web phrases for the use in operating room. Permanent head absorption. It was developed by Alfred Coleman, which is economically developed. Waters uh, introduced uh, the inline soda line canister in 1923. This is the basic model with, which connects the cylinders with an Soda line canister. In October 1929, Dr. Brian Ford was able to report on the use of closed circle carbon dioxide absorption apparatus in about 1200 cases. So, this is the present day connected to the two with the, in the soda line canister, the expiratory inflatable valve.
eminent personalities in the development of anesthesiology. They are John Snow. He is the first full-time anesthesiologist, promoted anesthesiology as a subject of scientific inquiry and through his own example established as it's a worthy profession. He considered as father of anesthesiology. He invented inhaler for ether administration. He was the first to scientifically investigate ether and physiology of general anesthesia. He described five stages of general anesthesia. In 1847, he published the first book on general anesthesia on inhalation of ether. His second book, Chloroform and Anesthetic, published in 1848, also the first epidemiologist. Joseph Clover from 1825 to 1882. Our monitoring of pulse during all times when we continue anesthetic temporarily if weakness or irregularity was found. First anesthetic to this administer chloroform in known concentrations using the clover bag. First to urge the universal practice of forward jaw thrust to overcome airway obstruction by the tongue. Perform surgical airway with metal cannula for glycothyroidine by anesthesia provider. Terry Van Whiteside Magill, Queens, he is from 1888 to 1986. Queens Hospital for Facial and Jaw Injuries in Sitka, Brompton, England, the Minister. Hospitals, blind cell intubation, medical forceps, medical circuit, elaborate bronchial tubes, and doctors, suction catheters with an inflatable pulse to aspirate bronchial secretions. For Robert McIntosh, he was appointed as the first Nuffield professor in anesthetics at Oxford University. His department was modeled on the Department of Medicine with this point. McIntosh laryngoscope created. Ralph Waters, first professor of anesthesia in the world. What Waters established the first academic program of anesthesiology in Madison, Wisconsin in 1927. His contributions were many and included the carbon dioxide absorption method, endobronchial anesthesia for thoracic surgery, and the introduction of cyclosophen. His chief legacy, legacy in many residents he trained who then became the leaders with the specialty in the following generation. He devised a wall chart describing the various stages and frames of ether anesthesia. His innovations include cocked endotracheal tube, new pharyngeal airway, introduction of control ventilation. So, USS first endowed anesthesia chain. This is station and anesthesia. A woman in 1949, pioneer in medical ethics, patient consent, placebo use, and clinical trials, coined the term brain death, assisting newborn rapid fire lecturer and music master. The appearance first women's activity respiration. Invented the jet injector for inoculation, which immunized millions worldwide. Mox analgesia pioneer in obstetrics. Uh, used to spark plug sized cylinders of cyclopropen and oxygen for analgesia. After years of jet demonstration of his own body, he died of poliomyelitis. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize. Inventor of pink valve, pink laryngoscope blade, and the pink airway. Regional anesthesia pioneer, father of pain, uh, pain management, wrote the management of pain in 1953, which is considered the multidisciplinary pain management. Founded the International Association of for the Study of Pain, founder of CPR and CPCR, Emergency Services, um, pioneer USS First Medical Surgical ICU, World's First Multidisciplinary CCM Fellowship, Peter Support. Then organizations in anesthesia. ASA, the society was founded on October 6, 1905, when nine physicians from Long Island, New York, organized the first professional anesthesiology society. The society expanded to 23 members in 1911 and renamed itself as the New York Society of Anesthesia. In 1912, the group petitioned the American Medical Association to create a section of anesthesia. 
and especially as the practice of medicine. Resolution was brought before the uh, AMA House of Delegates in 1912, requesting a section on anesthetics. The motion failed, led to the formation of a the Francis Hooper McMahon controlled the AA and the national meetings in the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, editor of current researches in anesthesia and analgesia from 1922 to 1939. February 13, 1936, the New York Society changed its name to the American Society of Anesthetists to demonstrate the, to the AMA that a national organization supported specialization. The American Society of Anesthesiologists on April 12, 1945, the American Society of Anesthetists became the ASA, became the voice of American anesthesiologists in the United States and across the world. Membership has risen from the original nine physicians of the Long Island Society to more than 39,000 today. Chairman Smith, surgeon and friend, chairman of surgery at Madison, member of the group founding of the American Board of Surgery, invited Ralph Waters and Paul Wood to the ABS meeting at the Palmer House, January 10, 1937. Then they became a birth of new board. Four sponsors incorporated in 1938 as a subboard of surgery. Anesthesia, anesthesia organizations in India. The first administration of major anesthesia in India, 22nd March 1847, in the Medical College Hospitals of Calcutta. The first chloroform anesthesia in India, January, given in January 12, 1848. The first woman anesthetic. First woman anesthetic in India and perhaps the world, Rupa by Padunji, was working under Edward Lorry in Hyderabad in 1889. She later went to Edinburgh for further studies. Dr. S. K. Bakshi, Dr. B. N. Sarka, Talwakar, Basel, Mukteshir Prasad, and Vers. Sahir Kamins conceived the Indian Society of Anesthetists. The society was established in 1947. The first official journal of the society was published in July 1953 by Dr. M. C. Ganguly, who was the first editor. First chair of anesthesia in the country. Mm. Chan Tandon, the first, the founder professor of anesthesiology of AIMS, the first professor professorial chair of anesthesia in the country, responsible for getting anesthesiology recognized as a broad medical specialty by NCI in 1959 and for commencing MD anesthesia training program for the first time in India in 1959 at AIMS. Then as a teacher, he held early morning classes at 7.30 a.m. for nearly six months each year preceding the MD examination. Would go, he would go around OTs at 1 p.m. to find if any trainee is missing his lunch and would either make his arrangements for a relief or do it himself. He would say a hungry anesthetist cannot perform judicial sleep. So, like this, history of anesthesia has been developed and slowly began to uh, evolve and finally it became as a uh, as an individual speciality, which, which has a very bright future. So, now, today, this is the elaborative, extensive lecture on history of anesthesia. Thank you all for listening so patiently. Thank you, students. <laughs>